When the lights come down and I leave the stage, it's you. Welcome to Direction of the Heart Web TV Skype Discussion Series. I'm your host, Mike Aloya, along with my partner, Mr. Pete DiLorenzo from New Jersey. How you doing, Pete? Good, Mike. How are you? Pete's brought us a great guest uh, here uh, to uh, speak with all of our viewers, and his name is Brendan Jones from New York, correct? That's correct. Tarrytown, New York. So great to be here, guys. I'll tell you, Brendan, uh, Pete's told me a lot of great things about you, and I know you're a, a musician, inspiring actor. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm just getting started in my career. Um, actually, it was 12 years ago where I met Pete, and when I saw him on stage, I really thought to myself, this is really what I want to do. This is really my life's dream. You're However, I really didn't have to... I'm sorry? Music. Comedy or music? Comedy, actually. Um, but I, I have been told I can't sing, and I've been trying to get into singing as well. I've been I'm getting involved with the church choir. Um, that's been kind of interesting. Uh, but um, comedy has really been my main focus as of late, and I've got on stage at Governor's and went on stage at Levity Live in Palisades Park Mall uh, doing some open mics in the city, um, just hitting it wherever I can. Wherever there's, a, wherever there's a microphone, I want my big fat face in front of it. <laughs> there you go, brother. Hey, I can feel the passion. Hey, check this out, man. Comedy's a wonderful thing, and you, I, and Pete all have that in common. We are all comedians. We've all hit the stage. We, our, our gift is to make people laugh. My father's a comedy magician. You know, it's such a rewarding thing getting out there and, 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 and running your material. I'm actually the redneck Muslim. I mean, it's Mohammed Bubba. I'm all dressed like a Muslim. I got a bomb strapped on me. I carried a postal bag, and I threw anthrax on people. <laughs> people thought I was nuts, but you know it's what? Genius. It it's made genius. people laugh. Now he's spinning Motown on Saturdays on the network. So, you know, God works through people, and I know God has a sense of humor, or he wouldn't have created the comedian, and he wouldn't have created the platypus either. So, <laughs> you know, here we go. I, I tell you, man. How, so you, how long have you been in, in comedy? How much uh, stage time do you have uh, under your belt right now? I'll tell you the truth. I, I don't have much stage time. Um, I did two sets of Governors, um, March 29th and April 1st. I was at Levity Live um, last week, and I did another open mic in the city. So I've been hitting it slowly, but just trying to get my job. I, I actually had an operation on my leg. Um, I broke my leg in November, and I had to go in, go into surgery again this past week to get the plates removed. Say, Brendan, when we say break a leg, we didn't mean for you to go into it. <laughs> but I, hey, I beat you to the punch. What do you want from me, Pete? What's, what's your day job, Brendan? <laughs> I'm an accountant. You're an accountant. All right. Yeah. Sounds exciting. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so, it's a living. You know yeah. what? I also I prefer That's a very good living. And you know what? It, it, anything you can do but as long as you can still follow your passion uh in life that's what it's all about man you know do what your heart says the direction of your heart that's what this series is all about we're all about global peace now you as a uh what's your i don't like to get into politics i've got possum politics show for that but what uh what side do you uh tend to lean towards or are you right there dead center I I would say I'm leaning more on the Republican side, just because Democrats are pussies. Um, <laughs> well, we don't want to get too. Uh, this is family friendly. Anyway, you're talking about kitty cats, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm talking about kitty cats. Yes. That's funny because this show we do we, we do not. I, I mean, uh, for myself speaking, I do not. As as an ambassador of world peace, I am. I'm not getting into any kind of political views or, you know, no, opinion. No, not at all, all we do is we stay on the page that our kingdom is not of this world. And if we're going to follow <laughs> God's laws, then we don't know. You know, we have to obey the laws of the land and man's laws to a degree. But Jesus said, for they choose to obey the laws of men rather than the laws of God. And that's why you got the world going and uh, down the tube, you see. Uh, mm -hmm. It's total chaos. But going back to, you know, I was just speaking with Bren, Brendan the other night and we were talking on the phone and. You know, I'm very honored that he looks to me that 
I, I'm a humble man, but 44 years this June it'll be that I'm in show business. And when he saw me perform, it just like, lit, lit the fire in him that this is what I uh, admonished him on is to love what you do, do what you love, and do it wholeheartedly. You know, walk with God. You never step on toes to get where you got to get. And, and that's the theme of my film, The Mentor. And, and, and he's doing just that. He's an accountant by profession. But, you know, maybe one day he's going to be able to say, hey, I'm not going to do that anymore. This is what I really want to do. My heart's on the stage. And I did that years ago. You know, I mean, I, I did all kinds of jobs. You know, and I have a literary degree, a uh, fine arts and, and, and graphic arts degree, a first class license in broadcasting and radio and television announcing. And yet I chose the stage. And, 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 and the acting and film and TV and now producing, right? So you see, he is following his dream. And what I have told him the other day, and I shared this with our viewers, Mike, and I know you know this, is that, you know, people can talk about something and say, I should have, I could have, if only I would have. And, and it lays there on a the shelf and collects dust instead of getting up and going for it. And the only way you're going to know is if you try. Absolutely. Ralph yeah. Waldo Emerson had the most profound saying when he said, and Robin Williams used to always quote it, that dying is easy, comedy is hard. Amen. Because we Absolutely. have comments. I'm and, telling and you what, Brendan, um, you kind of give me a throwback for when I first started into comedy. I've been on stage since I was nine years old. I was in a rock band for 10 years. Then I got into comedy. I created the rock and comedy career. We started opening up for rock bands. I had six comedy rooms, a television show, a showcase uh, of talent with Cypress Records, with Comcast. <laughs> Mike must have all, brother. Had limousines, a hotel, started with nothing, lost it all, became homeless. We went over this before. I'm a testimony. And now the network, you know, God God is, is behind it all. Um, God gave us a sense of humor, I believe, in order to deal with pain. And the best comedy comes out of pain. You yes. know, it's like when my ex-wife walked out on me. You know, she. Uh, I came home. I was out on the road. I came home. I found out. She took the kids and a little bit of furniture and left me with the dog, the cat, the bird, the hamster, and the turtle. It was oh, like the best that. part. Right? That, well, let you I'm, down. Still, I've still got the turtle. Mike, you want to you talk about pain? <laughs> let's, let's talk about pain. Um, let's talk about pain, brother. This, this, in November, these events happened to me. Um, I broke off a 12-year relationship with my girlfriend. I had to move out of my apartment, which I was living with eight years. I lost 90% of my possessions. Wow. I lost an uncle, my father's brother, who was a football coach and a really great man. I um, Then I went to, then I'm on my way to the gym, wrestling at the UFC gym. I'm like, you know, I got to see family for this week and this funeral. I hope I don't do something stupid like chip a tooth or break a finger. Wait, can't even think like that. Get out of your head. Hour later, I break my leg trying to do a wrestling throw. And then wow. a couple days later, I'm in surgery. Top wow. five, mother. Top five. Wow. One week. Now, right there, Brendan. And Mike, he I want just to lost that. some... Uh, if I could interject right him. there, what Brendan just said, Mike, and you can relate to this. We've all been through personal things and in our careers. And Brendan, you and I were talking about this just the other night. Uh, Mike went through, as he just gave a testimony of many things. I, myself, back in 97, when I first started my film project, was embezzled out of 60K. While I was away in concert, came back to find out I got cleaned out because of a bad call of judgment by a silent partner. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, what we're getting at is, then I, you know, I lost some grandparents. My, grandparents. my three older brothers went down like dominoes within a two and a half year span. Uh, and I, too, you know, uh, broke off with, with the woman that I love more than life. Uh, rather, she and broke you lost one of your missions. You know, these things... To go to the stage, and Brendan, this is what I was saying to Brendan the other day, Mike, I'd like to share with you, and I probably mentioned it before, that, you know, when we go to stage, and speaking for myself, that I take my craft and my profession very seriously because it is medicinal, and we are a healing agent. And I told Brendan just, you know, when I did Cornwall Hospital, these people, Mike, and you know this, I mentioned it on a prior show, that they were all cancer survivors or going through remission or, you know, uh, all forms of stage, some of them just diagnosed with cancer. And I walked away refreshed seeing the spirit in those people, not that they enjoyed my show so much and they were raving over and they had a great time, but I saw people that had a smile on their face and they were dying of a terminal disease and they had a smile on their face yeah. and, and wanted to live, the desire to live and to fight. I walked away saying, you enlightened me, you refreshed me, you made me feel whole, you made me leave here like after a good meal, you see. And when I go to that stage, I'm like, I 
and, and I, this is what I admonish to any comic or any actor or anyone in the arts, you do it for the passion and the love. If you're doing it for the money, the bling, the glamour, the glitter, Dick Clark, when I was with him, said, if it's not fun, get out. And you know, honestly, what, Pete, it's really awesome that you talk about that. And, Brandon, I want to give you a little bit of pointer. And my father turned me on to this. He does comedy magic. And when I started getting back into things and getting back on stage, me and a buddy of mine, he took a guitar and we did a comedy variety show with folk music and a little bit of magic tricks. And we went to the nursing homes. And these people in nursing homes have to be entertained. They have budgets for this. It's a great way to work out great material and, 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 and you know, touch people that, you know, sometimes feel as if they're forgotten. I still do. And that. I tell you, man, I, I tell you, it's so rewarding I still do it. I still because do I've seen do it. guys in wheelchairs that are my age Absolutely. that can't move. And it makes me think to see some old lady. You know what the beauty is of it, Pete, is when you start off, they're all sleeping. By the time you get done, they're all clapping and wheeling oh, around. I, 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 I do a lot of the nursing homes and for the vets and everything. I do a pro bono and I go in and I had a couple arguing with each other, sitting in a wheelchair with an IV pole on them, arguing with each other. And then before you know it, <laughs> laughing and everything and smiling. And, you know, so you, you, you encounter all kinds of situations. But It's but, wonderful, but, man. It but really I was going to say earlier, to cap off what I was saying with Brendan the other night was when I go to that state, I see the mother who's got a kid home sick, and I've said this in many interviews. I see the guy who just lost his job. I see the couple going through a divorce or a separation, and I look at it. This is not about Pete DiLorenzo. This is about them. They're the people that pay to come in and see you, and it's about them that for that hour, if you could put a little laughter, a little joy, a healing agent, make them forget their problems, it don't get better than that. Absolutely. It don't yeah. get better than that. And it's not about uh, ego or a high that, oh, look at me, aren't I great? Because that is not what it's about. It's about no, no. saying, wow, th this is this is a gift that God gave me, and, 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 and I'm healing people, I'm helping people to put a smile on their face, whether it's in a nursing home, uh, the vets, uh, or a paid gig. I like to see uh, what, what type of style that you're creating as far as your comedy is concerned, and you also do music, too, as well, Brendan, correct? I do singing, yes. Um, I, I don't play an instrument, but looking to get into some bands and doing church choir hey, stuff. And, um, oh, okay. I, I can imitate a lot of voices. That's one of my things. I actually, right, give us, give me us some that. examples. Do a few imitations. I do a lot of cartoon voices, like oh, uh, Stitch. Well, you know, Ben, I started off. You know, I can do a lot of things like that. Well, hey there, quick straw. <laughs> I love voices. Voices are great. Uh, uh, no, he said he does. We all do impressions. You do, Pete. Well, I hope he does I, major impressions. That, that's, <laughs> my, that's my forte. But what I'm saying is, it's like Brendan just said. He started hey, this man. cartoon. cartoon hey, man, this is a great like, show, man. Yeah, wait, when I first started <laughs> off, I started doing like family members and people that you knew and friends and cartoon characters. And now I'm up to over 180 voices today. It's therapeutic. But, that, that, you know, yeah, well, you know, I do jokes about it. I said, yeah, you know, I used to go in the other room and, and do all of these voices and they'd have arguments with themselves and they would win, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, the old cartoons inspired me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm schizophrenic. I'm schizophrenic. I'm schizophrenic. Love it. <laughs> you know, and, uh, We're a victim of circumstances, <laughs> Mo. <laughs> You wake up in the morning and feel like a sibyl because you do so many voices, you know. <laughs> well, you know what? My ex-girlfriend told me, she says, you know, I believe that you've got a bunch of personalities. I said, yeah, so what? I said, they all love you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, my, my first wife used to tell me, go in the other room and play with all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, you see, the deal is, is that they are voices. They are just, you know, when I go to that stage and, and uh, I put a voice out there, you, it's not just you get the pitch and you get the, 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 whether it's nasally or it's a throat voice or it's from the diaphragm or whatever, but you're getting into the, you're climbing into their skin and any good actor does that. You see, you become that person, their mannerisms, everything. Expression. So when you breathe life into a character, be it a documentary, be it a real life character you're portraying or even a fictitious character, you become that person for that time being. You research your role. So when I go to that stage and I'm doing an impression, whoever I'm doing, it's like, 
for that 30 seconds or that 40 seconds or, you know, and I just go boom, boom, boom. And you're, you're climbing in and out like, like a quick change artist and you're becoming that person on stage. You know what the cool thing is about comedy is that it's a craft, okay? You can take all these bits and segues and create a message. Right. And create a message and portray the pain, portray what you went through in a personal level, but take it to a level that's just, you know, ludicrous. Right. And, and, and be able to, to, to make people think, because I think everybody goes through the same things in life, just in different ways. And we all communicate through comedy. And the greatest comedy is drawn from real life. You know, I wish that we could make these guys that are chopping people's heads off laugh, you know, make them, they can turn around and see what's how stupid this is. And, and I don't understand. The irony, and, and, and on that note, that's a very good point, Mike, that when 9-11 took place, a tragedy, you don't make jokes about that. And no. Mike kind of put the brakes on, like like dark on Broadway, and went, wow, you know, how, how do we approach this, you know? Well, that's but, why I created the Redneck Muslim, but, man. But, well, hey, but what you're saying is very true, is that if you could see the irony behind the stupidity of it all, like I used to do jokes on Bin Laden, okay? <clears throat> now he's gone. But, and, and do jokes about these people. <clears throat> Wake up in the morning, and, and, and they're like, they don't even know what the hell. What this pile of rocks was over here. Now it's over there. What the hell? What are we bombing? You know, they don't even know. Okay, they have no clue. You know, I just said it should have been an Italian president because he would have just went over there. He said, "Hey, grab a piece of that rock. Sit down because we're going to talk." You see this baseball bat? <laughs> you know. You know what ISIS is to me? This is where he's going to be. ISIS is to me. ISIS is to me. They're backwards. Okay, the, the whole the whole world's backwards right now as far as this whole. Insanity going on. Here, and to me, what ISIS is backwards is a bunch of sissies. <laughs> They're a bunch of sissies. Okay? They can't talk about it. They're going to want to kill you. You can work. This is ridiculousness. There's got to be a way that we can touch people and, and, and try to, you know, through what you've got to bring messages. There's many episodes, Brendan. You know, we, we covered this on many shows that, you know, we're not mocking these people. You have to actually, you know, I'm not saying pity, but have empathy in the fact that. They don't know any better because it's ingrained in them from the time they're a child. I handed a weapon or a bomb and said, here, go kill those people. So they don't know any better. But you know what? This is why we have the show is to enlighten others. Now, just today, Mike, because you know we talk about the anti-bullying. We talk about these young people and all of these things going on. And today I saw a very disturbing story that was brought to my attention by who's going to be a future guest on our show, Bud Collier and, and uh, Edward. Um, uh, and and, and uh, this was a young lady. All right, I don't judge anyone. We do know scripturally it's wrong. You know, you have homosexuality, you have bisexuality. And this girl was bisexual, going to school and being trolled and, and humiliated by her friends or anything. She wound up committing suicide. And you know what the school said? Oh, she should have toughened up. This is why you got this problem, because of that kind of a mindset. Toughened up. This girl was, like, mortified. By people putting things on the internet, in person, all of these things, demeaning her, belittling her, mocking her, scourging her, she wound up taking her own life, a very young girl, okay? This makes me sick. And this is right. what I said. You've got to turn pain into positivity. Brendan, I'd like to ask you, um, what is your positive message that you'd like to get out there? And like do you have any, any type of thoughts towards a solution uh, towards global peace right. in this world? Well, yes. Um, you mentioned that everything is backwards, and I kind of agree with you. So we're all moving towards evolution, uh, growing and changing. And the one thing we can change, and that word evolution, and there's a lot of key words that revolve around evolution. Evolve. Uh, revolution. Evolve. Now, if you break apart that word, evolution, ocean is, and revolution, there's the suffix and the prefix. The root of the word, if you break it down, is evil, E-V-O-L. That spelled backwards is what? Love. Love. There you go. So what we're all going for is to evolve our love for human, the human race. That is the true evolution. The point is to put love into action, not just words, but put it into action. Because if we just talk it and we don't live it, it's fruitless. I notice that's what your handle is on Skype, is e Evol025. That's correct. Are you 25 years old? or? Nah, 25 is just a favorite number, you know. Cool. I'll tell you, um, 
that you've just enlightened me. I never uh, realized that. And, you know, a play on words is, is, is a wonderful thing. And words are very powerful and meaning is very powerful. And it's all about delivery and how you deliver your it's message. It's actually an oxymoron. You know? Yeah. And I, uh, you know, I write my column. Walk uh, uh, love. Uh, wow. Today is Mother's Day. Cool. You know, yeah. um, and and today's a special day for me. I just went with my daughter and my grandson to the grave and paid my respects to my mom. And I know she's smiling up there. I'm working with my father with the network. We're growing that. Um, I'd love if you have any uh, material out there on YouTube or something, uh, somebody can check you out. Please feel free to let people know right now how they can uh, see what you're all about there. Mr. Jones? Uh, well, share, you can, share, uh, share with our I, have a, I have a blog, uh, brendanjoneshblog.com, or you can wait, wait, see wait. me on Instagram, brendan.jones.h on can, Instagram. So our viewers can hear where they can find you, where they can look you up, where you're going to be, you know, share that with our viewers, because that's great. And Facebook me, Brendan Jones, brendan.jones.h at Gmail. Um, your on, what was your blog and your website again? Give that out to our viewers. Sure. Brendan Jones H dot blog dot com or Google funny P U P H U N N Y philosophy. If you Google funny philosophy, you'll be able to find my work. I love that. Funny philosophy. That's beautiful. Yeah. Give us a little bit of funny philosophy, Brendan. <laughs> sure. The two things I look for in a human being are um, two intrinsic qualities perception and charisma. Uh, there are two kind of rare qualities that a person can possess. Um, Pete has both. He has a tremendous amount of charisma and a tremendous amount of perception to see the truth and the beauty in life. Uh, that's really why I respect him so much. Right back um, up. <laughs> so I think that's the two things you, I really look for in a person. And the two things that can propel a comedian to stardom is both perception and charisma. And every good comedian has that presence that charisma and also have the perception to give you right between the eyes hit you the truth right between the face and humility, humility. Give, give us your uh, funny philosophy on uh, possible solution towards global peace hmm. tough uh, question ain't it <laughs> yeah, well, it really yeah. is I, 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 I think the, I think the, I think the problem is is that everything revolves around sex um, I can't understand why that uh, Muslims would actually think to themselves, yes, this is why I want to strap a bomb to my chest, because I want to experience 51 virgins. Well, they're actually Virginians. Virginians, okay. So 51 Virginians, okay. So let's have these 51 Virginians. Now, what, what, the question I have to ask myself is me. I, I'm from Jersey. I like a dirty Jersey. What's up, boy? Hey, hey you know, don't feel bad, guys. My ex-wife used to love to have sex in the backseat of car, except she always wanted me to drive. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that they're looking for these pure virgins to spend their afterlife afterlife with, and that's the one thing that bothers me is that it's ludicrous <laughs> to, to have fifty-one women that don't know how to and don't want to make love to you. That seems like a form of hell to me, not heaven. Yeah. Well, absolutely, especially when they end up getting up there or wherever they go, and they're a bunch of blow-up dolls. <laughs> that could give somebody a comfort. <laughs> it's a, it's a, they're looking for heaven in the wrong they're place, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't get, when it. They get it. When, when they see all of those virgins who are sitting there with shotguns going, okay. <laughs> Virginians. <laughs> well, <laughs> <the> boys. <laughs> so I, I, to to hey, lose my mind, you know? Give me, give me one dirty girl that'll just... Or, or a magnum like Clint Easterson. <laughs> I, want, I want one dirty girl that'll treat me like a blow-up doll for the rest of her life. That's there what I want. There you go. That's beautiful. They all look like Clint Easterson going... Maybe I want to be your blow-up doll. That's hey, man, it. I want, I want a girl that's going to treat me like a blow-up doll. There you go. There's a girl with a virgin sitting here with a magnum looking like Clint Eastwood going, make my... I got power six shots and over the top. <laughs> just give me one. Just give me one girl. That's all I want. Well, anyway, besides the virgin, is one that's going to be real I, and true. That's all I've ever that's wanted. That's it. Up on that. You know, I, I don't. I don't get the whole ideology. I don't understand the culture and the the mentality. To me, right is right, wrong is wrong, and guys, you're doing something wrong, man. What you're doing is wrong. You're, you're treating women terrible. 
It's like it's a whole big egotistical uh, Muslim and their Islamic extremist well, you know, communities. Well, I don't get it. Brendan just mentioned perceptiveness, you see, and, and, and this is what I took up with the delegates from the UN, not politically, but as you know, as an ambassador for world peace, I, I put that before them, and, and the common denominator is fear, and if everyone learned to get along and play nice and barter, you wouldn't need nuclear weapons and things, as we've mentioned, so what I'm getting at is the perception is that, you know, it, whether it be in a personal relationship, a business rapport, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever it may be. It's communication, it's honesty, it's sincerity, it's dignity, it's integrity, and we can all talk. Everybody wants to love and be loved. So and it's, 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 it's a humor. Books are written about it, books are made, uh, movies are made, but the bottom line when it comes down to it is how many people truly know, A, what it is, and how to show it. And it comes from God, and that's how we know how to show it to each other. Well, so I tell you, um, oh, right. God, and if you don't have respect or self-esteem for yourself, how could you love anyone else? Your neighbor, your girl, your, wife, your husband, you see? So, love uh, and evolve. I love that, Brandon. I love what you're standing for. I'd, like, I'd, I'd still like to, if you can give it a, a second that, to think about it. Right there, as your mentor, that's your signature right there because that is a beautiful uh, uh, logo, if you will, a beautiful symbol. That says who you are and what you stand for, and I love it. God bless you. Man. It's all about love, man. Uh, give us a little bit more insight of what your thoughts are and where we're headed as far as a, a world and a nation. I mean, we're living in some pretty chaotic times, and I ask all of our guests that. Uh, are you fearful of what's going to happen? We've got ISIS in Texas right now over the border making camps. We've got cells in, within our country. We've got bombings. We've got riots going on. We've got, you know, Yemen is on fire. Saudi Arabia is involved. We're at the verge of, uh, a lot of people believe it's revelation. I I don't believe that. Um, I think what Pete touched on is, is that our baser instinct is fear. Um, and people respond to fear uh, so so rant, so incredibly. Our news reports fear everywhere. Do you believe that's what people relate to. Do you believe in the end of days and revelations that we're living in the Bible times right now of what's prophesized? Hmm. That, that's a very good question. Um, All around us. Do, do I believe in that? Yes, I do believe in the Bible. I, I was a young adult minister at Montclair State University. Um, my father was a religion teacher for 17 years at St. Mary's High School um, in Rutherford. So I do follow the Bible and I do follow religion. Um, the one thing about Revelation is it's future events that have not yet come to pass. However, they could be coming to pass, and it could be happening now, but I'm not sure about that. Well, on that note, Brendan, see what we're saying, not to get, you know, everybody has their religious views, but religion is just an order of life. You have Protestant, Presbyterian, Baptist, you know, but there's only one God, and in the yes, scripture, yes. it clearly, and as you said, it is that was which was given to John, okay, the revelation of what is yet to come. And we're seeing the signs that Jesus spoke of, all the signs around us. It's on the news. We got tomorrow's headlines today that these things that are coming about and on this earth, he said, would get to the point of where it would not be since the beginning of time. And it's off the hook. It's like a fire that can't be contained. So we, not know, we don't know the day nor the hour of his return, but we know it. These are the signs he spoke of. And that revelation is about to come, the new heaven on earth. And Jesus is coming back. So these are, these are just... More and more things. I mean, all of these earthquakes, all of these disasters, all of these, the, the promiscuity, the crime, it's escalated to like, you know, off the hook that nobody now, since well, the beginning of time. Now, I'm going to stop you right there, Pete. There's, um, there's also a section that you're not seeing. What you're not seeing is the common day enlightenment that is going on. If you go on YouTube, if you search out enlightenment, you search out all these things that I have sought out, um, actualize.org, all these different, all these different areas. Um, oh. My life, I have a life coaching service called AchieveToday.com, where they talk about um, positivity and keeping your positive mindset and right. always clearing the limiting beliefs that we have about ourselves. Right. There is resources out there for someone who wants to find truth, who wants to find oh, enlightenment. Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you, and I've seen. You know what you're talking about. And there is, anyone can find the truth if they seek it. And that's in the Bible too. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Ask, it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. 
And yes. uh, with knowledge, you know, I believe you know, that wait, 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 they open a book and read and get knowledge. And then it says with knowledge, get understanding, comprehend what you're reading and then use the wisdom. Apply my comprehension, my comprehension and the wisdom that I have gathered growing up and, and going through life's experiences in the schools of hard knocks. I believe that when they speak of finding the truth, uh, the truth is not just Jesus Christ. The truth is inside ourselves. And that's a journey that I believe that a lot of people don't understand. And, and that's the enlightenment. Once you understand that that is your journey and you have to find that inner peace and inner sanctuary to understand and, and how to evolve and love yourself. saying that people have to search. And I believe that's Christ. I told you. We're all heading towards a level of consciousness. We're heading towards Buddha consciousness and Christ consciousness. Amen. And it's happening at a rapid pace, whether we see it or not. And these people are walking among us, I feel these enlightened it. individuals. And we don't even see them. And not to say that I'm one of them, I'm far from it, believe me. Right. <laughs> but I disagree. I, I, I disagree. I can see the light, I can see the passion. And you have a voice, and you've got a, a mission, man. We're all working for the CEO. And he's using it. He's doing it. He's not just talking about it. He's doing it. And I commend you for that, Brendan. Yep. Jesus look, said, there, look at that light inside your eyes, brother. Look, look, look at that light in your soul. It's there. That's and right. I see it, and Pete sees it. if you let it. And that's why Jesus said, don't put your talents all right, under a bushel. That's where the truth put is. Put it on a candlestick that it gives light to the whole house. And Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. He said that right to Pilate. You're looking at it. So, you know, and that is true that the truth has to be within you. So if we admonish, okay, to others, we have to practice what we preach. And we get that guidance from God and from his son, Jesus Christ, who was the epitome example of love and truth. And if we let that in, like Brendan said, that is the awareness. That is the consciousness. And that is how we pass it on to others. And, and Jesus said, the kingdom of God lies within. That's right. That's, well, I tell you what, we're going to end this uh, this segment of uh, Direction of the Heart. And uh, I really appreciate you, Mr. Brandon Jones, for being here. It, uh, it was a humbling experience. Oh, and uh, I'm grateful to have met you, uh, Pete. Same here. I love you, man. Uh, uh, too, man. And Brandon, great having you on as a guest. It was, absolute, it was absolutely my pleasure, Pete. And sure. Mike, it was you're great. Uh, we'll you know, get together on Facebook, and hopefully uh, one of these days, God willing, we'll be able to shake hands and break bread together, brother. Absolutely. You're down in Florida. I got a sister down there. I'll come see you soon. <laughs> that works. But by God's will, we will all be performing together. How's that? That'd be awesome, <laughs> brother. That'd be awesome. God Can bless you guys. Step up to my chest. Yeah, we'll see everybody next week. Thank All you. right, take yeah. care, everybody. Thanks for the heart. Rock Peace and roll. Brendan, keep Peace them out. laughing. Keep them <laughs> up, keep them laughing.